Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Do you remember talking about the different eras of history in school? Like the Ice Age, Cretaceous Era, Middle Ages, etc.? I sure do. I personally like to think there's two different eras in history. From the beginning of time to 2019, I consider that the Good Ages. And starting with 2020, I call that the Shit Ages. If you don't agree, then that's just wrong. If there's one thing us true SpongeBob SquarePants fans can get behind, it's the simple concept of dividing handfuls of the seasons of the main show into multiple eras. Back in the day, I remember people saying there was just the old series and the new series. The old series was just everything before the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which was seasons 1, 2, and 3. And the new series was everything after that, starting with season 4, because nothing felt the same after the first movie. While I can understand the sentiment, it's been 18 years since season 4 came out, so it's time to move on. These days, some names have spawned that actually make some sense for the eras. There's the pre-movie era, which consists of the episodes produced before the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, the post-movie era, which contains the episodes after the first movie, but before the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water, which is seasons 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the first 20 individual episodes from season 9. And finally, the post-sequel era, which is everything that comes out after Sponge Out of Water. In this case, it's the final 29 individual episodes of season 9, and everything that came after that. And there are the people that actually make sense and divide the seasons based on their actual quality. These days, it seems the general consensus would be that the eras are seasons 1, 2, and 3 are the first era of the show, followed by seasons 4 and 5, and then seasons 6, 7, and 8, and then season 9, and now the current era of the show is seasons 10, 11, 12, and 13. However, I have my own opinions on the eras of the show. No shit. I definitely agree with some of the eras, but I do have a few things to say about the quality of some of them, and will defend some of the worst eras. First up is seasons 1, 2, and 3. This is when the show was undoubtedly at its best. This era has many different names, including the classic series, the golden era, the pre-movie era, etc. I like to call it the best era. There are 117 individual episodes in these seasons. Everybody remembers these seasons. You could come across a fan of the show and mention an episode and they will remember something about it. Whether it's the episode title, what it's about, or a quote from it, this era of the show is amazing. And it's aged pretty well. So many people have gone back and watched those seasons and they still laugh at its best scenes even to this day. This is when the original creator, Steven Hillenberg, was the showrunner, and he knew exactly what he was doing as it was his show and this is the vision he had from the start. However, even this era of the show isn't perfect. There are still a couple of not so good episodes from this time, like episode 27, I Was a Teenage Gary from season 1, 52, Grandma's Kisses, and 74, I'm With Stupid from season 2, or 101, Party Pooper Pants, and 107, The Great Snail Race from season 3. But to be fair, there's only a couple episodes like that, and the rest of the episodes are amazing, and the best episodes usually make people forget about the worst episodes. But even the weakest episodes are better than the worst episodes of what's about to come. Next up is seasons 4 and 5. I like to call this the good era. There are 79 individual episodes in these seasons. The show was originally supposed to end after the Spongebob Squarepants movie, but Nickelodeon wanted to keep it going because it was so popular. Around this time, the quality was definitely going downhill, but that's because the show wasn't supposed to last beyond five seasons. By this time, Steven Hillenberg had left the series, but there were still some awesome episodes from these seasons. I've seen some people lump season 4 up with seasons 1, 2, and 3 because the best episodes from season 4 are pretty damn close to the quality of the best era. Same with season 5, actually. The best episodes of season 5 I've seen people praise so much. Some examples of great episodes from the good era are episodes 127, Dunces and Dragons, 132, Krusty Towers, and 133, Mrs. Puppeteer Fire from season 4, and 166, Crabs a la Mode, 167, Roller Cowards, and 193, The Two Faces of Squidward from season 5. 
And yes, both seasons have some stinkers for sure, like episodes 124, Good Neighbors from season 4, or 159, Rise and Shine from season 5. These seasons are far from the worst seasons in the show, but there are some more bad episodes in these seasons compared to the best era. But as season 5 goes on, the characters start to get more one-dimensional and mean-spirited, and that only gets worse as the series goes on. Which brings us to this. Now we move on to season 6, 7, and 8. This is generally considered the worst era of the show. Some people call this the absolute garbage era, but I personally just call it the worst era. I honestly do agree that these seasons are bad, but I still think there are some good episodes, which I'll get into. There are 144 individual episodes from these seasons. There are many problems with this era of the show. There was a lot of gross out humor that came about during this time. The episode everybody points to when it comes to gross moments is episode 205, The Splinter, from season 6, and it kinda came out of nowhere, which is another reason people hate this episode. The characters were usually at their worst during this time. Patrick was so much more mean for seemingly no reason, Squidward got hurt for just wearing a smug face, and Mr. Krabs' greed got to a point where he's now considered the worst character of the show, and so on. The worst episodes of these seasons are absolutely the worst episodes of the show. But I will say, there were some good episodes during this time. Some good episodes from these seasons are episodes 198, Krabby Road, 203, Not Normal, 217, SpongeBob SquarePants vs. The Big One, and 236, Sandcastles in the Sand from season 6. Episodes 245, I Heart Dancing, 258, SpongeBob's Last Stand, 270, Welcome to the Bikini Bottom Triangle, and 285, Welk Attack from Season 7. Additionally, I'd also argue that Season 8 is starting to improve compared to Season 6 and 7. Don't get me wrong, many of the problems that made Season 6 and 7 bad are still there in Season 8, and its worst episodes are also just as bad as the worst episodes from the aforementioned two seasons. But there are some episodes that I got some genuine laughs out of. Granted, I say the same thing about all the seasons, but I got more out of Season 8 compared to the previous two seasons. Season 8 is kind of all over the place, and the jokes weren't always executed well, but there were definitely some great episodes that are actually worth watching from this season. Like episodes 300, Frozen Face Off, 324, Planet of the Jellyfish, and 335, It's a Spongebob Christmas. And yes, I won't deny there are quite a few bad episodes, which kinda overshadow the good ones in this case. But those who say that every episode from season 6, 7, and 8 are bad, those people are just stupid. Next up is season 9. I call this the hit or miss era. There are 49 individual episodes from this season. Season 9 is interesting because the production of this season was split into two chunks. As previously stated, the first 20 episodes were produced before Sponge Out of Water, and the last 29 were produced after. For the latter half of the season, Hillenburg returned, and people said the show was starting to get good at that point only. I disagree with that statement because we got some great episodes and bad episodes from both halves of the season. Episodes 347, Little Yellow Book, and 360, Spawn of Your Fire, are bad episodes from the first half, and we got good episodes from the latter half, like episodes 371, Spawn Dog Long Pants, and 375, Mall Girl Pearl. On the other hand, episodes 341, Extreme Spots, and 355, Plankton's Pet from the first part of the season, are really good episodes. And episodes 384, Foodcon Castaways, and 388, Mutiny on the Krusty from the latter half of the season, are bad episodes. Around this time, the characters' personalities are changing again, and some of them are changing for the better. But I have to mention this as well. This season was where it became more clear than ever before that the show has run its course. We have some more reused episode ideas here, and several stories are starting to become boring and predictable. But at the very least, the episodes are starting to get funny and entertaining again. Our next era is seasons 10, 11, and 12. I call this the Renaissance era. There are 120 individual episodes from these seasons. Around this time, the episodes were starting to get more positive reception compared to some of the previous seasons. Obviously, these seasons aren't as good as seasons 1, 2, and 3, but fans have agreed the show is getting entertaining again at this point. The animation looks pretty good too, but it was much wackier than it's ever been before. While the episodes here aren't nearly as mean-spirited as the worst episodes of the show, the characters do feel one-dimensional here as well. 
but for different reasons compared to seasons 5, 6, 7, and 8. We do have some great episodes from all these seasons, like episodes 401, Burst Your Bubble, and 410, Feral Friends from season 10, episodes 427, Squid Noir, and 446, Krusty Cleaners from season 11, and episodes 466, The Krusty Slammer, and 493, The Ghost of Plankton from season 12. I won't deny, though, that we have some duds, like episode 395, Housewarming, from season 10, 442, Ink Lemonade, from season 11, and 464, The Nitwitting, from season 12. However, there are some more signs of another potential downfall coming for the show. For example, The Krusty Slammer is a cool episode where Mr. Krabs turns the Krusty Krab into a jail to contain plankton, and the restaurant becomes part prison. Later in the season, we get episode 504, Patrick's Tantrum, which is where Patrick has a tantrum when he hears a bell. That meant, as a kid, he had to take a bath when he didn't want to. Patrick has PTSD from the bell, and his tantrum makes it feel like the show is trying harder to appeal to kids than ever before. Around this time, the show is starting to reference old jokes from the best era. I'd argue it's more tasteful in seasons 10 and 11, but they start to go overboard with it by season 12 and it only gets worse. Moving on to season 13, this is our current era. I have some working titles for what I call this era, which I'll get to after we talk about it. Season 13 came around at a time when we knew that Spongebob spin-offs were coming out, and since Hillenburg didn't want spin-offs, I was worried for the future of the franchise as a whole. I personally was starting to not feel as excited for this season as I did with all the others, and I'm not too sure why. It could be because of the spin-offs that were announced, it could be because it came out when there were still a lot of episodes left to air from season 12, or it could be because it was the first season to premiere after I graduated college. I don't know. We do have some good episodes from this season, like episodes 518, Spongebob's Road to Christmas, 525, Say Aw, and 540, Ma and Pa's Big Hurrah, but there are some really bad episodes from this season as well, like episodes 515, Pat the Dog, 528, Plain to Sea, and 541, Yellow Pavement. The worst episodes of this season make watching this season more of a challenge for me than any prior season. As previously stated, the references to older episodes are still prevalent, and at this point, there's no going back. It was kind of fun at first, but at this point, it's just getting irritated. We still see bad things happening to Squidward for no reason. Almost as if it's a rule amongst the writers to not do anything, oh, I don't know, good for Squidward at this point. But what pushes me over the edge is the fact that the main series is promoting the spin-off shows. Characters that originate from the spin-offs appear in the main series, like Narlene and Nobby from Camp Coral appearing in episodes 516, Something Normal This Way Comes, and 524, Upturn Girls and Grandpad from the Patrick Star Show appearing in episodes 531, Welcome to Binary Bottom, and 533, A Skin Wrinkle in Time. That alone is proof that the show has lost all of its shame. Believe me, if I ever want to watch the spin-off shows, I won't. And this era would be so much better without these characters. But that ain't saying much. And I know this isn't the writer's fault. Nickelodeon is clearly holding the Spongebob crew hostage and forcing them to work on the spin-offs. So with all this in mind, let's go over some working titles for this era of the show. My first working title is The Spin-Off Era, since these episodes are being produced at the same time as the spin-offs, and the spin-offs are garbage. The Shameless Era, since this season is reusing the old jokes way too much and promoting the spin-offs, which is absolutely obnoxious at this point. The Oh shit, this exists? Era, since the ratings for this era are so low that fans may not even know this season exists. The challenge era because it's become more of a challenge to watch this season more than anything. And my last title is the era that makes Mikey wish Spongebob was over more than ever era. Like I said, it's a working title. And that is all the eras of the show. It's very interesting how every few seasons or so, the show becomes completely different. It also seems to be this way after every theatrical film. After the Spongebob Squarepants movie, the show starts to decline in quality. After the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, the show starts to get better again. After the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run, the show becomes shameless. I am aware that the show can still redeem itself again, but frankly, I'm not feeling hopeful. I'll never not be a fan of Spongebob, but it hurts me to see it sink and drown in deep water again. 
I know I've said this already, but I just wish the main show would end and they only do the spin-offs from now on. I know that wouldn't be good for the network, but let's be real. Despite the amazing shows we've all grown up with, Nickelodeon has been a bad network for our entire lives and we didn't know about it until stories about scandals have come out. All these different eras make the show absolutely fascinating, and I love analyzing all the seasons and see what they all have to offer. But with how bad season 13 has been getting, I don't know how many more upcoming seasons of the show I can take. Well, at least we'll always have the good old days. And that means that the days we're living in are bad.